Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we are seeing a pretty good smart move uh, rebound back here in um, equities. And see the jump here in, in Apple and already up to 1393. We are coming into just a bit of a resistance. There's a, a pretty key level at 11,253 in NASDAQ, if you look in there, and we'll kind of jump around right now just to kind of get everything all squared away. Bear with me. Well, Rina says, good morning, good morning, and Let's just go in and take a look. There's so much happening right now. Uh, let's just go in and just take a real fast look. Just a quick look at FX. Um, we do have the Euro here. We're kind of hugging around these lows, around the 1626. Remember 1625 is bias chart, uh, bias chart support from Friday, actually from, uh, actually from Thursday and we kept it there for Friday. And I think we may have lowered it a little bit for today. Uh, we're looking at cable, also come back okay. I do have the, the S&P and the NASDAQ here, um, but I have it on the daily. And the reason that's key is because we have the 20 and the 50 day moving average. And for some on this rebound, it's expected to be a pretty good target to go for. And you can see right here with the NASDAQ, we're already at the 20 day moving average. And we're not too far away from it. In the S and P's, Nasdaq already's made a pretty good little push here. It looks like we've made it almost to eleven two forty. I'm kind of pulling back just a bit. Saw so just a little bit of a hanging man on a five minute. But if we go into going to the equities, we did see um, I guess the early signs. I mean early signs, but uh, some pre-market popped in just now, which is Apple. Just now here, let's go and take a look. If we see if we move to a 30 minute, let's see if we see anything here in Microsoft. No, they're trading. Let's see if we did open up. It says Monday, but hang on. Okay, look, you see in the video, we're already up to uh, 550, 520 here. Sorry here. Right there. Real gap, pretty decent gap from 514 up to 520. So kind of opened up a little bit solid here. Um, Google, you never really see that in the pre-market that I noticed. Let's go and take a look here with the, the other half of the big eight. Actually, do have the Amazon of the two hour, nothing showing anything here. Oh, yeah, the 30 minute. Facebook, it did gap, well, from 254 to 257 here. Uh, gap here in Tesla, 418 is key, key level. And Netflix, uh, nothing here. Now, let's go into the indices. Um, bear with me. And you can see here with the NASDAQ. Now I've got the five minute here. Um, and I'll keep the one minute here um, at the same time in case you see something real fast develop. And then the 30 minute with the two hour. So if we go into the two hour, open this up a little bit further. You can see here, 
we had actually had this essentially double bottom here and we broke that trend line. Now, uh, from what I saw here on the um, commitment of traders, we got some people that were um, stuck short and you can see how we pushed higher. So they're really squeezing them pretty good on this move. And I think we'll make it up here to this. I've got 253 and 262 right here. And if you look at it on a daily, right here, that's 253. It's a key level right there, 251, 253 on the daily. And if you go with this daily, right, this one, I close that one is 265. So you could push just a little bit higher, but the touches, let's go right. Actually, that one is more cute right there. Let's say 262. Now you can see we've already met, we've already hit the um, the 20 day moving average, which is, is at 11.210. So we're above that. And that was considered to be the first target. And potentially you might even go even higher all the way up here to the 11.385. But you have some numbers where you could push beyond that. But the first area um, that I think we can move to. It's going to be this 11,262, somewhere between 250, 252, 262. Could see a little bit of a pause because we are above the 20 day moving average. Uh, let's go back to the, on the daily, let's go back to the NASDAQ. I mean, not, can't even talk, dog on it. Uh, to the two hour chart that's on the daily. And here we've got 262. And let's take a look at this high right there. That comes in at 11.288. A real good right there. You see here, touches here, here, here. is 286, maybe on the stretch. And we're still moving higher right now on NASDAQ. So let's take a look here. That's 285. And I like to color them in on a key level, magenta, pink, whatever you want to call it. I don't, I don't give it a rats, you know. Um, but the reason I do it is because that'll stand out. You know, like, you know, other ones are all, you know, this medium blue, medium blue, whatever. And then I see that and that will trigger me, uh, trigger my, or catch my attention if I see that. We'll probably push it just a little bit higher. Right there. Going to come in at 287. And we're still pushing high. Look at that. Holy smokes. They are just cleaning the clock of some of those people. Wow. It is just blowing. Look at that. It just blew right through that two, right at the 252. We're struggling a little bit here. Um, Apple now at 114. We'll give a little bit more info because FX is dead right now. There's not really anything happening there, but we are really seeing some people just really get the heck squeezed. So we're coming into some resistance here. 
which would be 262 There we go. Still pushing higher here. And we're already we're into that area here where you would expect the market to Get, but but we want to keep an eye on the equities. Let's see here. And the next level I have here. Basically that 282, 285-ish. That, that, that's what we'll look for to go and have some trouble there. And then getting back to equities, look pretty good, decent little pop in volume here. Let's go back to the equities. Dang, look here at Apple at 114.30. Uh, wow, look at Microsoft. 209.58, so look at that. We gapped two and a half dollars from the close, although we had been up as high as 209.5. Blowing and going, look at NVIDIA, 521. This is how I come in with my little levels in here. When I, I look and what I do is I don't go by the, by the indices themselves. It's I just use the individual stocks at their levels and then they'll tell me, okay, now I can come in. You can see here we've got Amazon here at 3120. Tesla, remember 418? Well, they're above 418, not a whole lot, but they're 420, uh, 29 right now. Um, Netflix. You can't see it very well, but it's right there at 43. And Facebook at 257. That being said, um, and you can see, you can't see it very well. It's right there, 3119 on Amazon. Um, I'm not seeing anything like they're running into some, you know, a little bit of selling here at this point. They're just all just pretty much just solid. We'll go right back to... The first part of the big eight. Look at see. Look at Apple, one fourteen thirty on its highs. Um, Nvidia, five twenty one and a half on its highs. Microsoft. We just hit this two oh nine and a half, and there's a little bit of selling here. So, once again, like I said, we may be able to push up. Potentially, I mean, we already had a pretty good run, but potentially, if you're looking at the NQs, we may be able to push up. Potentially, maybe up to that. I would look for some selling around that 11,283 if we get there. But this is a decent area here now. And I mean, if you're long, you'd want to tighten up. Um, let me go back to that. So here we are. Um, I still think maybe one more push towards that 11.286, but you can see here, we're in a pretty good area right now. This is a two hour. And you can see also here on the daily, you see we're right there at two, we're almost at 2.62. That's a key level, 2.62 on the daily. And um, potentially we could get up to this. 287. Give it a chance. Don't be too quick. But I mean, they've had a pretty good phenomenal run.
but I'll look to my individual equities to tell me. NVIDIA just backing up just a little bit from its highs. So maybe we'll start to see these markets kind of back off just a little bit. Okay, anyway, that being said, um, we can leave it here. We'll get the news. Well, first off, let's go to the data. As far as economic data, for today we have uh, Mexican trade balance. So nothing in the, in the European uh, session. And we do get Dallas Fed manufacturing, but that comes at 1030 Eastern and that's it. We'll go on and move into the stories. Well, we are opening up the morning with a bang here. Wow, they're still, look at that, they're still pushing higher. That's why I kept it here. Uh, potentially, like I told you, maybe 11.27, but we're gonna see some resistance here at 11.262. Um, seeing a little bit of profit taking, only a minor amount. So let's see how much they can squeeze them. Uh, starting traders not panic yet by new Brexit brinksmanship. Britain may be heading for a no deal Brexit in three months, but among traders in London, feeling so far as one of deja vu rather than a panicky rush to dump UK assets after Britain threatened to ditch parts of its European union divorce deal this month. Uh, markets are pricing in 4 to 45% chance of exiting the EU trading bloc without any alternative agreement arrangements at the end of 2020. Some banks see it higher. I'm going to keep an eye on this NQ. If they jump up to 280, I'm definitely going to be looking. My I, I, peepers open. But that 260 is already a pretty good kilo level there. So I'm just looking at the individual equities. Uh Yet, as a four-year political crisis between London and Brussels enters what may be the final stretch, investors and companies are stamping as a uh, heavily sell sterling and hedge against volatility as they did when the uh, no-deal Brexit risk intensified in the past. Brexit fatigue is definitely there. You got that dog on, right? Coronavirus has overwhelmed Brexit. Participant inflation levels are still relatively light and it's generally opportunistic, said even to a sterling trader at Barclays. Cash sterling weekly turnover rose 35% in the third week of September from late August, or definitive data shows, um, but it's below most weeks in September and October in 2019 and 18, when worries about a no-deal Brexit intensified before deadlines to reach earlier agreements. True sterling has fallen 5.8% from this month, from 34.81 to 127, reversing its August gains, but analysts say the move has been exaggerated by a general bout of risk aversion Craving the dollar than just Brexit fears. Pound is well above the September lows of 1959. Richard Benson, head of portfolio manage, uh, investments and currency asset manager of Millennium, is short sterling and thinks trading activity is being dampened by more investors and traders working from home. There's really slightly uh, less group think, less of the group endorsement of, oh, well, oh, we are all doing this. This is a trade. Adding that recent virtual industry roundtable, the numbers of people in short selling were balanced by those long. Another explanation, traders say, is the COVID-19 overshadowing the Brexit in the minds of investors and company executives. For instance, exporters who would usually adjust currency edges after a pound slump have seen those strategies upended by collapsing revenues from coronavirus. Well, that's a good point. The market has become very jaded with political process, said Simon Mannering. Uh, Aaron Hurd, senior currency strategist at State Street, believes the two sides will reach a Brexit deal and buys more pounds. Nerves grow. Oh, just a bunch of junk. I don't have any note. Talk about Brexit fatigue. You got that right. That's number one on the hit list. Okay, dollar near two-month highs, economic recoveries, risk loom. 
The dollar hovered near a two-month peak against a basket of currencies on Monday as doubts about recovery persisted ahead of a barrage of economic data and political developments in the U.S. While the rebound in U.S. stocks on Friday has helped to curb the ascent of the dollar deemed as a safe haven, signs of a slowdown in the nascent recovery from the pandemic and political uncertainties have kept investors on guard. The dollar index stood a little change at 94.53. The dollar's rise reflects unwinding of short positions. There's no two main drivers rising new shields, risk off trades. The U.S. Uh, inflation-linked bonds known as real yields have risen almost 20 basis points that were testing a record low early this month. On the whole, higher yields, really, real and normal, tend to support a currency. Data on U.S. currency futures positions released on Friday point to more upside potential in the dollar's recovery, blah, blah, blah. The flip side of that was net large positions in the euro, which showed a slight increase. Against the yen, the dollar's more subdued at 546. Few people will be tying the bet to the election outcome. At least they will until tomorrow's TV debate, said Kyosuke Suzuki. Uh, ahead of the debate, the New York Times reported President Trump paid extremely little income in recent taxes. Uh, recent years as heavy losses from the business enterprise offset hundreds of millions of dollars in income. Few investors now expect the contracts to surpass any stimulus package seen as vital support to the pandemic stricken economy before the election. This week provides the market's U.S. data to gauge the health of the world's biggest economy and include consumer confidence on Tuesday, interesting, a manufacturing survey and consumer data on Thursday and jobs on Friday. Anyway, enough of that stuff. So we'll move into our analysis. And henceforth, what I told you, I like to have those stock screens open. And that way, I, uh, what I do is I, um, bear with me. This way, when I do it from this one, I can still have those other ones open and hopefully not miss anything. So let's go move into the year dollar. I guess I could open this a little bit further. There we go. Move everything over here so I don't miss anything. And let's go and take a look. There we go. So starting with the euro. So the euro finished the week at the lows. To start the week, prices will likely push the lows. Support comes in at 1582 with resistance at 1693. Now, like I said, with equities pushing higher, they may have a little bit of a tougher time. Uh, so I almost wanted to keep the 1625, but I said, nah, give it the opportunity. And so if they do take one quick dip, uh, we are opening the door for potentially move to 1582. I like this 1593 right here. Um, let me see right there. But I thought maybe they'll try and touch touch this low here. Hence why I said 1582. So we'll give it, at least you know where your risk is. All right, here's so we'll go 1582. And resistance. Sixteen ninety-three. 
individual equities are still holding up relatively well. And that's what I use to come in to gauge my levels to come in at, with the NQ. I don't go with the, I mean, I'll use the levels of NQ, but I don't go with them anymore as far as, oh, um, you know, I just look at the individual equities and use those and that'll tell me how much further if we're running out of gas. And, um, we're still pressing right now, we're 11,258 and a quarter. Um, let's go move into the cable. Cable spent the second half of the prior week in defending the 27 area. You can see that here. Support remains 26.52 and resistance will be 28.41. So I've kept that 26.52. We've only had a couple of dabs below 27, barely, but uh, we'll keep it there. But once again, with stocks, equities moving hard, it doesn't seem like they want to push lower, but that's what we had, 26.52 and 28.41 for resistance. And let's go move into the Aussie. So the Aussie um, finished at the lows of the week around key level of 7019. You can see that. Support to start the week will be 6972 with resistance at 7095. Let's see right here. So 7095 will be our resistance. There we go. Let's go into Kiwi. So, um, Kiwi attempted to rally off the lows on Friday, but found sellers on approach to the bias chart resistance, which was 6601. You can see here we made that run on Friday, bias chart resistance 6601. But before we got there, we ran into some sellers. Uh, resistance to start the week will remain the same with support at 6471. So 6471. Now, once again, if we saw a little bit more dollar buying, but I didn't think we were going to, but we had to give it that opportunity in case we push lower. But right, once again, with equities doing so well, risk on it would not seem likely. So the dollar cad finished the week near the highs. Resistance to start the week will be 34.33 with support at 33.16.
Moving to the out of the peso. So the dollar peso saw a strong turnaround last week. Resistance to start the week will be 22.42. Looks like we just went and got there to 22.42. And support will be 21.91 as the range has been wide. Um, my point being is why we've got this big disparity between the bias chart support and the resistance. But it looks like we just tagged the 22.42. Then we got to here, we got to 22.44. And our resistance is 22.42. And support twenty one ninety one. On to oh, okay. I thought it said somebody, well, raise their hand, but it didn't, there's no questions. <clears throat> so onward and upward, let's go and move into the doll again. Wow, we're at 11,266 in the NQ. Let's see where we're at with this, with the spoos. 3317, we'll take a quick look. Yeah, they're on their highs, and they've got a key level here on the spoos at 3320. And it looks like they just tagged that. Oh, no, they haven't. They're just about there to get there. 3320. Um, okay, so <clears throat> Mapoko asks about, um, I hope you're saying your name wrong. I mean, right. What about Sterling versus the cat? Well, that's not one that I look at, but we can. So bear with me. Let me just wrap up the, uh, uh, but we'll take a look at it. But I just don't look at that one. Um, uh, Sterling versus cat. Let's just do the dolly in real quick and I'll knock that one out of the way. The dollar yen posted a solid rebound last week, um, closing above five, uh, 550. Resistance will be 587 with support of 507. So 587. Wow, 11,271 in the, in the NQs. And 507. And Sterling Cad, let's see. Nice little rebound. Let's go and take a look at a uh, fib real quick. Wow, well, 11.275. They are just smoking the shorts. Well, we are above the 38%. I would be looking right here. Seventy two forty four. 
Oh, God, I can't get that thing white. Seventy-two forty-four, and then I'll pull it down to a two-hour to see if we see something just before there. Seventy-one seventy-eight. I'm gonna go right there. Seventy-one eighty-seven. So we've already had a pretty good run already, um, but we have broken out of this area. You see that? We've even taken the stops above here, 71.45. This is a good little area right there. And it looks like they just about made it, which is 71.87. If you're scalping it, you could take some off but I'd be looking for resistance in, in this zone here too. Let's pull this here. See how you got the pretty nice little shelf here. You see, this pulls all the way back to here. So this whole zone, really from 71.88, to 72.44. Um, you can see if they'll try and push a few more stops into here, but you've already had a pretty good little run here. You can see here, some decent little volume traded here. So that's at 71.87. If you're already long, you probably take a little bit off and see if they can squeeze it up to that 72.44, but I would look for them to lay more off. Um, if you're looking already on a daily, oh, doggone it. We just got a bad price tick, I guess. Yeah, we sure did. There we go. That's the logical area they want to test, which is a 72.46. But the underbelly right there, the low, they're going to, that's 72.14. So here's what I would say is um, any moves to 72.14, I think you'll see some take off. I would take some off on a jump, then, and you'll probably see that it pull back. Doesn't mean it's going to end right there, but um, from here, from 71, once again, 71.87 to the, the low on that bar, which is 72, 72.14, I'd look, I'd look for the stops to go into their area, and you could use that to take some off. Um, so let's go. I hope that's helpful. Um, let's go move into the cast dollar index. The dollar index continues its rebound. The index may be willing to take a respite as equities bounce back. Immediate key level is going to be 95.09, but bias chart resistance on Monday will be 94.83 with support at 93.87. And with that, we'll move into the cross rates. Well, NVIDIA jumped up now to 522.5. Tesla's at 421. We're higher, but a little, just a touch bit of selling, not much. Um, Okay, so we're here at the QEN. So the QEN finished the week near the lows. A value zone comes in at 
Look at this. I don't know why I put up all this stuff. It should be 6823. That 59 got included there. It should have it comes in between. Oh, that's what I meant to say. 6823 to 6859, which is the value zone. And you can see how they came down and tagged that. Shorts will look to cover. There will be resistance at 69.63. So 69.63. And I said 68.59. You can see we had that from Friday. You can see here they made a lunge down there. But we got these values on. Could they take another little extra dip? Let's see. In between, we'll go off of this low, just that low, which would be 68.42. And, and let's go into Euro Yen. So the Urian closed a week just below the key weekly level of 2401. The pairs open to a further pullback to 2288, which will be support. This is this one's old. Don't go on it. That one's old. From probably from last week. So looking here, what we're looking at, we've already closed below 22. Because I remember thinking about this. Like a week, uh, my, if you go into the FX, um, Forex Analytics, go to basic technical Asian update. It'll give you what I said. Now I remember what I said. I said, we spent the entire week stuck in this range here. And so the potential was for us to move a little bit lower. And I think I had it for right there, which would be, see this high here and here, right there. Uh, we can go at 2226. And on the upside was going to be the, 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 the low on this bar, which would be 23.30. On to Euro Kiwi. So the Euro Kiwi rolled uh, rallied last week into major weekly level 78.80 before pairing back. You see the 78.80, and then we did pull back. Uh, resistance will be 78.21 with support at 76.77. So 76, 77. The OCM pushed lower the entire week, finishing on the low. Support will be 73.81, which we have ready to start the week with resistance at 74.94. Let's wrap things up with the guppy. Sterling odd. The guppy moved off the lows of the week for the last three days. The pair is open to for the short covering and should find resistance at 35.26, which that's where we're at right now. 
Bear with me a minute. And let's go to story nod. And supports thirty three fifty one. And let's wrap up the show with starting on. Starting off, posted a solid rebound last week. Resistance will be 82.57. With support at 80.11. And that'll do it. And you can see here, we're still pushing higher here, 11.262 here on the NQ and uh, Spoo's, and this is on the daily chart. And it looks like we made a pretty good little run up here. We made it to 11.276, and remember 11.282 is pretty key, but um, we're seeing just a touch bit of selling but not much we'll just take a quick look at the big eight you can see here apple at 1421 um look at microsoft still up in here and nvidia is still pushing a little bit higher here This is on a 30 minute chart with the exception of the Apple's a two hour. Um, and you can see Amazon still up in here. We're at 3122, 3131 is resistance. Um, you can't see it, but we're right there at 483 on Netflix, 4288, and uh, Facebook at 257.80. Actually, 254.82, I'm looking at the quote screen. All right, well, that'll do it. Thanks for joining us on the European Crossover Webinar, and we'll see you in the chat room.